When we created our update enemies method, it contained only the code necessary to move an already living enemy around on the screen and kill it if it left the screen. What it didn't do was deal with enemies that had already been killed, or more importantly, enemies that hadn't yet been set to alive. We're going to fix that, so let's jump back into our update enemies method. You'll remember that this method starts out with a for each loop that goes through each enemy. The next statement, an if statement, checks if the enemy is alive. If so, it moves the enemy and performs a screens bounds check to kill it if it flies off the screen. But what if the enemy isn't alive? In that case, let's make our game set up that dead enemy in some random position, give it a velocity, and make it alive. Since all of our enemies start out as dead, because the constructor for the game object class sets alive to false, this will not only restart dead enemies that have gone off the screen, but will also start all of our enemies when the game starts. Notice the if statement that checks if the enemies are alive. At the end of that statement, just pass the right curly brace, add a new line, and then type the following. Else, open curly brace. This is a way of making our if conditional statement above even more useful. The else statement is like another conditional, except it says, if the first conditional was false, then do this. Since the first conditional checks if the enemy is alive, the else statement occurs when the enemy is dead, which is exactly what we want. Now, we can add code inside this conditional that we want to occur when we have a dead enemy. The first thing we want to do is set that enemy to be alive again. So, inside this else conditional, type the following. Enemy dot alive equals true. That will reactivate the enemy so that in the next update loop, it will move across the screen like we want it to. But the velocity and position for that enemy aren't set. That's what we need to do next. Below the line you just added, type the following. Enemy.position equals new vector2 viewport rect dot write comma math helper dot lerp open parenthesis open parenthesis float close parenthesis viewport rect dot height times min enemy height comma open parenthesis float, close parenthesis, viewport rect, dot height, times max enemy height, comma, open parenthesis, float, close parenthesis, random, dot next double open parenthesis close parenthesis close parenthesis close parenthesis wow that's a lot but if you take a look at just the first few pieces you'll notice it's an assignment operator we're setting position to a vector 2 and it's just the arguments that are really complicated and not even both arguments. The first argument is an x-coordinate, and that's just the right-hand side of the screen. But the y-coordinate looks complicated. Instead of being a static number or a variable, it's the product of another function called mathhelper.lerp.
LERP is short for linear interpolation, and it's a way of getting numbers within a range. In this case, a range between our constants, min enemy height and max enemy height. We're using LERP with a random number to get a number between our min and max numbers to generate a random y coordinate for our enemy ship. This will place the ship at some random height on screen. Now, add another new line and type the following. Enemy dot velocity equals new vector 2. Math helper dot lerp open parenthesis negative min enemy velocity comma negative max enemy velocity comma open parenthesis float close parenthesis random dot next double open parenthesis close parenthesis close parenthesis comma zero close parenthesis it's the same here just with velocity instead of position and different values the negative signs for the x coordinate indicates we want a negative x velocity this will make the ship go from right to left, and y is zero. We don't want the ship flying up or down at all, just left. We're done here. This code will set up the proper positions and velocity for any dead enemy ship and make it alive again. Last thing to do is close off the else statement. Just add one last right curly brace and you're done. Last step, drawing the enemy ships. When you're ready, move on to the next step.